These, of course, Mr. Williams, behind me are some of your famous Welsh mountains, aren't they? Well, yes, that's a painting of the Nan Franken looking up towards uh, the Glidders. Uh, that is a, an interpretation. I know the mountains so well that I can interpret, and uh, that is an interpretation. And these, these here are Patagonian mountains? Yes, well, I went to Patagonia, and that's a completely different problem. I was only there for a few months, and I thought it was fatuous to interpret. Uh, I, I guess could it be ridiculous and rather arrogant to try and do it. So I went out really as a journalist, and I wanted to make a record of the people and the landscape, and just put down what I saw, and then probably interpret later when I yes, thought about I it. I see it. I can think of many reasons for wanting to go to that exotic bit of the world. What were your reasons for wanting to go? Well, I suppose I, I have been called a romantic painter. Uh, I've felt that this is a, a, an incredibly romantic story about the Welsh going out there. and. Uh, I've always been impressed by their, their bravery in going out and fighting all the incredible odds they had to put up with. I never thought I'd get there, but um, I uh, suddenly heard about the Winston Churchill Foundation and their fellowships, and I thought, well, if I, I apply, I might possibly get one to go to Patagonia. So I put forward my scheme. and. Uh, the word Patagonia seems to do something to people. They don't. Sometimes they don't know whether it's a dog or a or a tree or a ge <laughs> um, architectural term. They just don't know. But the name seems to attract them. And the sheer audacity of the uh, suggestion, I think. <laughs> I think it would be best to tell me about Patagonia by showing me some of the drawings and sketches you've done there and commenting on them, don't you? Well, I landed at Trelew. I'd only seen this dreadful desert, and. Uh, there it was, it was nothing but scrub, bush and dirt. I couldn't see Trelew, I couldn't see the valley. I really wanted to be back in Van Sado. Yes. It, was, it was desperately depressing. And, and not a Welshman thing. Well, suddenly I heard somebody, somebody came up to me and said Williams, and I said yes, and he said Carpin Williams, I said yes, and he said Glyn Cairiog Hughes. Oh, extraordinary. And then I thought, Glyn Cairiog, and the Glyn Cairiog Valley, I don't know if you know it, it's one of the most beautiful valleys in Wales. You know. And there was Glyn Cairiog, uh, uh, the valley, and this desert, mm. and I, I thought, heavens. Did it bridge the chasm a bit, the very presence of a no, man with that made, name? it made it worse, you know, with the name <laughs> Glyn Cairiog. Uh, it made you want to be back in the Cairiog yeah. Valley. Yeah. Would you show me some of the pictures? And uh... Uh, This is Capel Maria, which is, um, well, it's the Westminster Abbey, I suppose, of the... Uh, chapels in the valley, whereas Capel Bethel in Gaiman is St. Paul's, it's yes. architecturally the best. Capel uh, Maria is where all the heroes of the first settlement are buried. And it's a, it's a terrible place, really, in many ways. The earth is, it's just a lot, tiny bit of rising ground out of the valley, and the earth is slightly contorted, the gravestones are turning over. It's a desperately sad place. And the stones, the tombstones, are of slate from Bethesda with the inscriptions Ercor, Bivaru, John Jones, carved in Bangor and shipped out to... Imported from here yes, to... Yes, yes. How extra... It's exactly like a, a Welsh chapel. It's the odd thing, the trees never blow down. The land, I suppose, is so hard and the roots go so deep that however terrific the gusts are, and they go up to 200 miles an hour, the trees never blow down. And there again is this fantastic rocks on the edge of the valley and the valley going, going away to the right. It's a very alien setting for Welsh spirits, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I think Welsh people are able to assimilate themselves practically anywhere because they don't look very much. They always live inside themselves. So wherever a Welshman was, he would remain Welsh whatever the landscape was, I think. Mm. And they, of course, remain tremendously Welsh in spirit and everything. When you say that Welsh people don't look very much, do you, do you regret that a little bit as an artist? Do you wish that they looked more? No, I don't wish Welsh people to be any different to what they are, because, <laughs> I mean, I, uh, it is just a fact yes. that Welsh people live within themselves. They don't observe, uh, they're not inquisitive with their eyes looking, uh, in, certainly in the valley. I, I was amazed at their lack of knowledge of the birds. 
They just didn't know. They hadn't, in fact, named them. They'd named a few. And what was so interesting was the sentiment, the sentimentality, the way a, a bird which vaguely, only vaguely corresponded to a Welsh bird, they gave it the Welsh name. So rather a dreadful old bird called the Banduria. It was a, a great big bird with a long beak and a yellow breast and a grey back and red legs, which flew around uttering a sort of monosyllabic conk like that. Yes. This to them was the curlew. They call it the galvinia. Yes. So galvinia, oh yes, that's the galvinia. A rotten old foreign bird gets called a lovely curlew. Yes, and when I said, oh, that's not a galvinia, oh yes, that's <laughs> yeah. a galvinia. But look, you're, you're a famous looker, aren't you? Would you say that you were the exception that proves the rule to Welsh people? <laughs> well, I don't know. No, I, I, I like looking at things. Of course, every artist likes looking at things. Uh, uh, I suppose I do. Do you feel, uh, I mean, this uh, has been, must have been, a pretty violent, traumatic visual experience for you. You've been used to painting whales and what whale stands for. Well, of course, this must have a lasting uh, uh, effect on your work in future, mustn't it? No, all I hope is it improves my painting. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps it will, just as Paul Gerrit will improve my painting, because I've been painting the same thing for 25 years, more or less, and uh, I hope it will, will give me a sort of bit of a jolt. Can I have a look at some of the of these Welsh faces? They are Welsh, hmm? Of course uh, they're Welsh, they're not Spaniards. Oh, no, 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 I got a few Indians, because the relationship between the Indians and the Welsh was always such a wonderful one, tremendously satisfactory one. Well, this is a little sort of diamond of a man called Elias Garman um, Owens. He, he actually came from uh, Betus Garman and went out to Patagonia to join his uncle. But he's a terribly nice person. He's a Welsh-born man. He's a Welsh-born man, and he may be coming back this summer. And uh, I got on tremendously well with him. He's very, very nice. Uh, Swellin Griffiths. Now, he is a, a character from Gaiman. He, he's a carpenter and uh, very, very Welsh. Uh, Kerry Ellis, a very delightful, quiet, dignified farmer. He was really as quiet as, as, as the Chubut River and the force. It's all quiet, and the Welsh like this quiet. The Spaniards don't. And Kerry Ellis was a, a wonderfully gentle, quiet person. Have they retained uh, the... Uh, how many there could be fourth-generation Welshmen there? Mm, yes, I think they are. Mm. What is it? In, in a hundred years, fourth and children of fifth. Fifth. Have they retained their Welsh character? Oh, I should say so. I should say they, they are extremely Welsh. They, the, the, um, I think Welsh people are gentle people. I don't look upon Welsh people basically as violent people. Uh, they are gentle. I, of course, with uh, <laughs> Neath and Aberavon, you might find violence in the rugby football, but basically I think they're... Uh, a gentle lot. Yes. Hmm. Um, that's a family at a place called Fairkeel. He was a, a, a cardigan show. They, they were cardigan show originally, and uh, they still have photographs of the farm in cardigan show. So, though third generation Argentine born, he, he is a cardigan show man. Oh, yes, he knows he's a cardigan show man. Yes, but this gentleness that you speak of as a characteristic of Welsh people. Um, Aren't we on the edge of losing it? I mean, isn't there some dissimilarity between these people in Patagonia and Welsh people here in Wales today? Well, they are, I should say, their gentleness has become exaggerated in isolation. And they're, they're absolutely amazed at, at, at the, the bombs and things in Wales. They're horrified at that sort of thing. They just don't understand it. It's something which is so alien to their character because they never kill the birds. I remember when a whole lot of parrots were sweeping down from the cliffs to plunder the fields in the valley. All the farmers said, oh, look at the old parrots. Aren't they funny? I mean, it, Although it, it, they, they were it, subject to, mm, to oh, they were, considerable they, loss. Yes, mm. but they, they wouldn't kill a parrot. They wouldn't kill, they wouldn't kill birds. Uh, and uh, the director of the National Park in the Andes said that the Welsh, he liked to have the Welsh as rangers. They were such wonderful horsemen and wonderful skiers. But they lacked one thing which would make them first-class rangers. 
and that is their complete inability to be ruthless. They won't throw people out of houses if they come and squat. They just say, no, I'm sorry, we can't do that. Uh, remembering my grandparents' generation, I mean, I recognize all these faces from my grandparents' generation, but I find it more difficult to recognize them today. What I'm asking is, could you agree with my suspicion that today in Wales, we have degenerated from the gentleness of these people who can't even shoot parrots to what we are today? No, it's, no, it's a difference. It's not a, a degeneration, because the Welsh people, uh, I say basically they're gentle people. But they were always were hunters in Wales. They, they, these people are not. Uh, they have lived on the Bible, and they were non-conformist. And after all, non-conformist arrival, it only came in a very, very latter part of, of, of the history of Wales. Yes. And they really have evolved from the non-conformist the Bible and, and, and the Bible. Mm. So the qualities that they have today perhaps is due to their retention of the principles of the Bible, which perhaps we've lost today. I think so. Ah, I so. No, I, and without uh, the Bible, they would never have, have succeeded. They'd have never lived. They'd have just had to go. The, 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 the Bible was their absolute strength. Mm -hmm. And that they, they, they really had to well exist on the Bible. That's the soundest argument for the retention of the Bible I've heard this year. <laughs>